Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Now, welcome back. We have uh, Dave here today, and we're looking at his uh, SRV 2000 from Roland. Uh, what's going on with this unit today, Dave? Well, Chris, what we have here is we have capacitor meltdown on the PCB, and it looks to me like this oxidation stuff on the PCB is capacitor failure. These are all Sanyo capacitors. We're going to be replacing these with Elna. These are the electrolytic can style capacitors and we have enough to do pretty much everything you see here that looks like this. All right. So we're going to go ahead and, and as you can see it's already apart so we're going to get these boards flipped over and start the soldering and uh, we'll see when we get a good update. And we've got the macro lens on here, and this is the back side of the board, and you can see there is a little bit of discoloration here. And maybe I could do this both hands. If you hold to the light, you can see right through it. Um, they're pretty toasted, so we're definitely going to have to replace these, no doubt. And hopefully this unit will sound a lot better. Like I said, it is working. However, it just doesn't have the best sound. Yeah, there's some oh, of the electrical gunk in there. It's buzzing. It's humming. Yeah. It's, it's can, failed can noise. It sounds like um, white noise in the audio signal constantly. The louder you turn the volume, the louder it gets. Now, the problem with these electrolytic capacitors is that there's a electrolytic material inside that dries up with age or leaks out if they get too hot. That's actually what these X's are on the top. That's a vent. So when this gets too hot, they pop. And then they release the magic smoke, as they say. I don't know if we mentioned this, but we'll be pulling all the Sanyos and replacing them with Elnas. I think I said that already, right? Uh, you may have. So, all right. Well, they'll yell at you in the comments if you have. <laughs> all right. Well, Dave has gone home for the night because he's about an hour's drive from here, up north, and uh, wanted to do a little bit, just put myself here for a minute before. I'll go too much further with this project just to show you where we got. Now we did manage to get all the large capacitors off this board. We are holding on to the little ones. I'm actually, I've got the analog board here in front of you right now. He has the digital and power board with the rest of the case at home. And the reason because I just don't have enough room in this shop we're in right now, which is actually a spare bedroom in my house which uh, you may see from the camera panning around it's at times is you know basically just a you know a big uh, it's a computer desk but it's not really specifically a computer desk but it's this big bench that I have here with uh, kind of a half tech desk half computer repair desk going on I have my wife's computer on her own desk and I have my own computer on my own desk which my computer at one point was a studio set up for recording music and stuff so there's not a whole lot of room in here so he took that stuff back home plus he has it set up on a board kind of just everything ready to go he could just grab the big piece of wood with all the stuff laying on it and put it in a safe place so he took that stuff home and I have this left over and I'm gonna go ahead and take out all the small electrolytic capacitors on this but I'm, I'm taking a pause here for a moment just to point out something all these capacitors are polarized you can see as this large one here has a stripe on the side. The stripe on these are actually for the negative side. Obviously this over here would be the positive side. So you can see this stripe aligns with this pin. So like I said, this would be the negative pin. On the smaller one, you can see that same stripe. And when we go to put these back in, we have to look at the board and see where these are marked. Now, not 100% sure. Let's see. Yeah, the camera will pick it up. Okay, you can see the solder mask on here, this white circle with this kind of like block coming off the side of it, this like line or you know, just this extra little tab, I guess you'll say, like a white tab. That's to indicate where the negative's gonna go. And like I said, these are all glued in, which was good. I'm, I'm gonna also glue these when I'm done. Um, and if I could get in here, you can see, here's another one, here's another one. So this is where those are gonna line up. So if I actually grab that piece back, I'll just simulate it. That's going to go in like this, because that's where that tab is. Some of these smaller ones, 
don't have that tab. What they have is one of the leads has a circle around it, which you can barely see that white circle right there. Let's see if I have another one. Here's that white circle again right here. The other lead doesn't have that white circle on it. So you can see the white stripe matches the white circle. Some of them don't have that stripe on it. And honestly, that's the first time I've come across them. So it made me do a little bit of research and I really didn't know how to look for it. But if you look here, if you get close enough in, it says BP, which stands for bipolarized. So these are actually non-polarized, or like it says, bipolarized, meaning they can go in either way. And I figured that out because there's no ring. Because I started looking at these as I was taking them out, saying, hey, some of these don't have rings on them. I wonder why. Oh, that's right, because they're bipolarized. So when I uh, order some of these parts, I need to make sure that I get those. Uh, I'm going to continue on with some of these tonight, get the rest of them out. I have... Also, you can see, downloaded the service manual, which is really nice. This is going to give me schematics and blown apart views and parts lists and everything. So I'm going to cross reference this when I'm done with the Excel sheet that I'm making with all the rest of the capacitors. And once I have another update, I'll come back. This is pretty good uh, fine for now. Another little quick point to make. I have all the capacitors marked on the board. I basically... Just went ahead and grabbed the board. Oh, sorry for the bad lighting. I wasn't anticipating on doing this, but I just decided to spare the moment. You could see I marked the caps with a red marker as I checked them off before I finished taking them off and put them in my list here and also made a new column for the bipolarized versus polarized. And I'm not actually typing this in. I just hit B or P in the field and it automatically fills in behind it. So I just have to hit one number here or two numbers depending on obviously that. And then I'm either typing 50 or 16. The V's already coming in. And I even have this fancy UF coming in over here. So that's the nice part about Excel. You can really get it to format nice for you. And like I said, I will have a follow-up video about this at some point just on how to make this sheet. This is also going to help me make sure we got the right parts because I'm going to go ahead and sort this not by number but by the voltage and then capacitance and put all those values together in a summary and I'll look at what parts Dave already bought and we'll check a look at it and see what we're missing and then order them. I, I think we skipped over that bipolarized one because that was overlooked. Um, but that's going to be something, you know, like I said, he, he arranged the parts to begin with. Um, he did that all on his own, and, and he brought this to me to help him finish it. So I'm going to help him do that. And uh, once I get a better quantity here, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I wanted to come back and show you a better view of the process involved in taking these out. You can see I've marked the top of them with the red marker to indicate that these have been written down on my list. So these are all categorized. Uh, I know which ones are which. Some of these are bipolar, some of these are polarized. Uh, they all have different values. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you my method of removing these. I'm going to start with this one right here. Uh, you want to try to wiggle the larger ones out as you're as you're desoldering them so if you you know pick one that's next to a whole bunch of other ones you want to make sure you have room to wiggle it out so if you know you don't want to work in like a middle of a big cluster you want to work you know from the outside in but this one's out in the open so this will be a really easy one to show what i usually do is, is put my finger over the, the top of it and then flip the board over and it helps me you know get like a tactile feel to where that piece is located because as you can see there's a lot of traces here so if you flip it over a couple times also if you look to see what's next to it for example we have this eight pin chip uh, if you flip it over you can see here's that same eight pin chip right here and so this is the pads right next to it and if i flip it over one more time we can confirm that that is indeed what we're looking for so what i do is, is i come with that same marker 
over here to the side. Sorry for bumping the camera. And uh, I put a little mark next to the traces so I don't lose it. And then what I do is, is I get the soldering iron. Now I'm using Dave's uh, Heiko FX888D, which he left over here for me. And uh, if you just come over with this. Now this is a chisel tip, which, which is helpful. You just put a little bit of solder on here just to melt that tip up. You can actually just rock one side out, and then you come over and get the other side and grab it and rock the other side out or just pull it and it should come right out that hole. And I have a solder sucker but with these small ones it's not even necessary. And if I flip it over you can see that that capacitor has been removed. Which was right here. Also to note there's that white circle that indicates the polarity. That's where the white oop, that's where the white stripe right here. That's where that would get hooked into. Now see this is a 16 volt 10 nanofarad uh, microfarad, I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out the rest of all these and as you can see, I got a big bag of them. And then the replacement process will begin. I'll have to order the bipolar ones because we don't have those. And uh, take inventory to see what else we do have and need. He was getting these off of eBay from uh, Chinese suppliers. And of course, a lot of them never showed up. So I usually get from an American supplier or uh, Gene Co's website. I guess I'll put a link in the description uh, once we're done with this video with all the different resources that we found to repair this unit. 54 capacitors in total were pulled from this board and the digital power board. Uh, this is the audio side of it, or the analog board. The other board sat next to it, which had a digital component in the front and then a power section in the back, which of course had the largest capacitors of the, of the two. But they're all been pulled. I got the pads as clear as possible on the top from the, from the glue. The bottom side, I got all the um, solder sections cleared out with the pads. These have all been catalog uh, cataloged and categorized by polar or bipolar. And I'll switch over and show you what I have for a chart in a minute here. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much ready to start soldering in what I have on hand, and we'll have to order what we need from the rest of it. And looking at my chart here, you can see how I have it separated by um, the ones I need to purchase versus the one I already have on hand. There's the bipolarized caps, um, and then the rest of them are all polarized. I gave them a different shade of red because I don't have any of those, nor do I have the rest of these in the list. There's not too many. There's only 20 that need to be purchased. Capacitors are really cheap. Um, you can see I have a, a calculation down here to tell me how many were pulled, how many you already have, and I verified that um, there is indeed 54 of them here. Um, when Dave purchased these, he must have got doubles of the 16 volt 47 microfarads because he got the standard Elna's and then he got these nicer ones. I'm going to go uh, with the nicer ones when I do this. But yeah, just gotta get the rest of these in. I'm just I'm gonna put this on hold for a little while once I get this uh, ordered. So it'll be a few days before I get that back in when I come back to this video. But I'll give you an update when I have everything soldered in and the stuff in by then. I managed to solder what I had on hand onto this board. You could see some of the caps in here. These are the Elna's. Actually, they're all Elna branded but there's some that are in these like aluminized barrels and there's some that are in the regular uh, plastic coated. I still got to pick up a few more. I got some of the larger ones and the bi-directional bipolarized. Now, I mentioned before when I showed you the counts something about the number 54. Well 
There's actually 53 in the bag, and I thought I was missing one because my counts came up to 54 on the computer. But I was actually not missing one. Uh, it turns out I had one of them listed twice, so that actually fixed itself. So all these are, are definitely accounted for. And I double-checked the schematic because one of the symbols on here is a little different than what they're using. I don't have the macro lens on right now, but if you look, there's a plus sign or positive sign next to this capacitor on this side and on this one that's on the other side which all the other ones they indicate which side the negative goes to not the positive and if you flip the board over you realize that they have the positive side of this capacitor going into the negative or the ground plane on this board um, and I, I think the reason is because there's a negative and a positive 15 volt rail and that may have something to do with why these are flipped but I was really leery before putting them on just to make sure it was actually right. So I checked the schematic, and, and the schematic also has it indicated that way. And I checked the diodes in the back here, which are the next um, component in the line on the schematic, and it, it did check out. So sometimes you have to be careful because they do throw loops like that on you. I think they did it this way to indicate, like I said, because it's on a, on a different rail. That would make the most sense to me. But yeah, this is all I can do with this for now. Dave has the other board, and there's a couple of the, the resistors. I'm sorry. There's a couple of the capacitors on that board that have to get changed. Um, they've all been pulled already, but he has the board, and I have the capacitors. So we'll have to come by one day with the rest of his stuff. Hopefully, by then, I'll have the rest of the capacitors in. So this is going to do it for now. I'm going to go order all that stuff, and next time this camera's picked up for this particular video, it will be to show you the finished product. Well, it's been a few days, but I wanted to give an update on this project to show you where I'm at with it. I got all the capacitors on this board reinstalled. I mentioned I had to wait for some of these to come in. I have received them all. I mentioned before that I had an Excel sheet listing all the different capacitors as I took them out. However, as I sorted them out to which ones I need and already had and which ones I already installed, I needed to make a list of what I need to order. And I actually moved a group of them off of the visible screen and forgot to scroll down and see where they were. And I noticed that now that I'm done, when I went to redo everything, it's actually three uh, 2200 microfarad capacitors that were missing. And it's actually a kind of a good thing that they were missing because Dave had already ordered them and they just weren't here when he came the first time. And uh, he didn't have the polarized capacitors because he didn't know he needed them. And there was a couple other values that he didn't get. But apparently, most of them arrived today. And luckily, the 2200s were in that pile. I did go on the Mauser's website to try to order them, and it turns out you had to order a minimum quantity of 250, and I only need three. So that was kind of a, I guess, a good thing in my behalf. But going back to this board, like I said, all the caps are done. You can see we have these typical Elna capacitors over here. These aren't like anything like super special, but they're they're nice capacitors. But you'll see that there's these green ones. These are the Nippicoms, and these are audio grade. These are the Nippicom U series. There's a few of them here. There's a couple different values of those. Those are all bipolar. So wherever you're seeing those green ones, those are gold uh, bipolars. Then we have over here, but these are also Elmas, but these are the Silmic 2s, which are your silk wound uh, capacitors, which are specifically for audio. And they're a step up from the other Elmas here. Again, this is what was ordered. Uh, we did have duplicates of these smaller caps here in the standard black Elma style, and I opted to do these instead because we had them. But you can see all of them are done. These two larger ones up here, as well as uh, this guy here, or what came today. 
and then the rest of these larger ones I already had. These are 1,000 microfarad, running at 16 volt, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you can see the 16 on it. And again, these are the Silmix. These other ones are just the basic Elmas. These are much bigger than the original ones that are in here. I also went ahead and just put just a little dab of hot glue on each side just to keep these sturdier. Uh, the other ones were completely glued down. In fact, a lot of that glue was pretty beat up on the other board. And that's actually what's left is the other board, which is at Dave's house. He's going to bring that by um, probably in a couple weeks when he has a chance to get back down this way. He is an hour away. And uh, we're going to put the rest of the capacitors in that board. And then that sat next to this one. It all connects up. We'll put them in the case and fire it up and see where it is. He's also working on getting himself an oscilloscope since we don't really have one of those yet. And uh, we're going to access these test points here and utilize those with the manual that I have over here and make sure that all these you know, set uh, trim pots in here are set right. That's it for now. I'll have more of this video later. Here's that Excel sheet we were working with earlier. You can see there's two columns just so I can get all on the screen at once. And those are all the ones I've soldered in already. You can see all the two digit, one digit, two digit capacitor numbers are on this board here. And then if you look at the remainder, you can see that they're all three digit numbers. And I believe the ones that are in the 300s are all in the power section of the board, whereas the one in the 200s are more of the, on the digital side. Uh, and you can see on the bottom are the three 2200 microfarad capacitors that, well, Dave has at his house. The rest of them I have here. And next time this video is you know, shot, you'll see that being done. Well, it's been a couple weeks. Dave's back. He's actually uh, outside for a second. And he brought the power board in. We're going to put the rest of the capacitors in. All the parts are here. We even have the new battery off here. This is the old one uh, already disassembled, ready to get uh, reassembled to the new battery. And yeah, gonna make this quick tonight. Just get this thing going. There's, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 tops capacitors I gotta put into this. You can see here's the other ones in the other board that I did already. And we're just gonna get this all connected, connect the wires, and we're gonna be good. See when this is put together. Oh, we're about elbows deep in it now. I got stuff everywhere. But then again, it wouldn't be any other way if without stuff in the way. That's what I say. Hey, hey. Well, here's the board put together for now. Uh, Dave has to take this home because there is another piece that gets hooked up to all these uh, components here, these wires, but all these caps were replaced. So this is all I can show you now for the most part. Um, there will be a follow-up video when we actually get this completely put together. I'll, I'll bring the camera with me at some point and we'll show you what this looks like, but so far so good. Thanks for watching.